the primary objective of occlusal adjustment is accomplished by selective grinding of tooth surfaces that cause stressful occlusal contacts and interfere with jaw function. Due to the individual variations in occlusal contacts, it is impossible to list a set of equilibration rules that would apply to all patients. In this video we will examine various types of interferences and how they may be adjusted. Deflective occlusal contacts may be broadly characterized as interferences to the centric position and interferences to lateral and protrusive movement. Premature contacts in the centric position. The slide illustrates a premature contact in centric. If a cusp is making premature contact in centric and does not make contact in lateral excursions, the adjustment should be done in the contact area of the fossa opposing this cusp. The cusp is ground only when it is making premature contact in centric and lateral excursions. Premature contacts on anterior teeth should be eliminated by grinding the lingual of the uppers. Do not grind the incisal edge, as it is considered a cusp tip. Premature contacts causing anterior slide of the mandible. The illustration demonstrates deviation of the mandible anteriorly due to occlusal interference. The interferences are located. Grind the mesial inclines of the upper. Or grind the distal inclines of the lower. Or both. The mandible closes without interference. Anterior sliding, if any is on the same horizontal plane. That is there is no variation in the vertical dimension. Premature contacts causing lateral slide of the mandible. Premature contact or deflective occlusal contact. A contact that displaces a tooth, diverts the mandible from its intended movement, or displaces a removable denture from its basal seat. This slide illustrates deviation of the mandible to the viewer's right as a result of premature contact. Prematurity results when CR does not equal MIP. The interferences are located on inclines and adjusted. Do not grind cusp tips. The interferences are located on inclines and adjusted. Do not grind cusp tips. The slide illustrates closure of the mandible without deviation. Next we will consider interferences that occur during lateral and protrusive mandibular movement. Working side interference. Adjustments are done according to Schuyler's BULL rule. Grind the lingual inclines of buccal cusps of the upper teeth and the buccal inclines of the lingual cusps of the lower. In this manner the previously established centric contacts are maintained undisturbed. The mandible moves without interference. Interferences on the non-functioning side. The goal is to eliminate all heavy contacts on inclines, as soon as the lower teeth move out of centric. Some centric contacts may have to be sacrificed, but all of the centric contact points on each tooth should never be ground away. Only the anterior teeth should touch in protrusive excursions. If the interferences between anterior teeth in eccentric movement, Grind on lingual aspect of the upper incisors and cuspids. Do not disturb centric contacts. Do not grind the mandibular incisal edge. In this video, we have considered specific interferences to the centric position and eccentric movements, 
In the next video we will describe the process of equilibrating the Columbia Dentiform.